Victor Naj. I am the product manager of the Environments Group, and this is our 16.3 kickoff video. First, I'm going to present our delivery goals, and after that, Emily Bowman will present the discovery plan for the coming milestone. At the top of the of our planning issue, you can see a little clarification in our direction. That's too low level for direction page update, but too high level to be included in a single issue. If you are interested, please check that out. Now let's turn to our goals for the coming milestone. First of all, we want to continue our work on the cluster UI integration that we shipped in 16.1. We are very, very close to uh, provide namespace level support for the cluster. This means that today in a single environment, we visualize the whole cluster state and all the cluster resources. This is not the best for most of our customers because very likely there are multiple teams, multiple environments, multiple applications actually running on a single cluster and the GitLab environment likely uh, corresponds to either single teams or to single application of a team and the namespace selection, the team will be able to filter only that namespace where the resources are relevant. The other item in the in the same area is to provide watch API support. <clears throat> Today we load the cluster state a single time when the UI loads for the first time. With the watch API, we get near real-time updates of the cluster state in the GitLab UI. We have two stretch goals <clears throat> in this domain. One is to show the flux sync status in the environment page. This basically means here you can see this cluster UI integration on a, on a live cluster. <clears throat> and we have this environment health healthy badge already, which shows that all these pods that are running are actually healthy and there are no failing pods. At the same time, we don't know out of this whether our GitOps installation is up to date, whether it's currently trying to sync or it's out of sync for some reason. The Flux sync, sync badge will provide one more badge besides the healthy one sh showing the status of our GitOps synchronization with Flux. And the other item is again related to very similar to namespace selection. That's to provide a convention on further filtering resources in an environment by labels. This will make the previous certificate based applications automatically be filtered as they were previously as that integration used the same labels that we intend to introduce. <clears throat> the second item, which is um, uh, Kubernetes office hours actually, is something that we think is very important for us to build the community to support the community. And we were going to run it on the 24th of July in the early mornings in Europe, early evenings in APAC and likely at night in the Americas. Then we want to support other GitLab teams, namely the Runway project specifically, where we plan to ship something that we call the external CI jobs. We are actually just going to start working on it and we likely won't be able to ship the whole feature. The idea is that today <clears throat> GitLab allows registering commit status from an external tool, whatever that might be, but it's impossible to actually integrate a job into a pipeline that just needs to wait for an external trigger to continue the pipeline. With GitOps, that's pretty crucial if we want to visualize GitOps as part of the pipeline to see that that commit was already synced or it's currently being synced and then we can move on. The external CI jobs want to support this use case and many other use cases that require an external tool to block the pipeline. This is something that's actually needed for the Runway project as well. The other item that's needed for the Runway project is to support the environment keyword with the trigger keyword. The trigger keyword allows to construct parent-child pipelines, and these are often used in deployment. For example, there might be an application code owned by a development team that triggers a child pipeline for the actual deployment. And today, it's not possible to uh, set up an environment with that uh, triggering job. As a result, it's very easy to, it's very hard to track uh, cross pipeline deployments. The adding environment support to trigger keyword will solve this issue. The following items we want to 
work on is improve our Kubernetes version support. We have a versioning policy that wants to add version supports to recent release Kubernetes versions three months after the initial release. And this is time to add support for Kubernetes 1.27. We did the evaluation work a couple of months ago, thanks to Pam Artiaga. And uh, in the next milestone, we actually want to do the actual delivery of the necessary adjustments. At the same time, um, we have a 72 bug, namely Kubernetes beta API was deprecated in version 126 that was reported recently, and we don't support the v2 uh, stable APIs yet. As a result, our auto deploy hand charts might fail for some of our customers. We want to fix that as well together with the 127 support. The last item here is not a feature deliver, it's more like a maintenance work. Uh, we realized that our core metrics are miscalculating uh, the agents. The metric always wanted to calculate the number of active agents that were used in a given month, but actually it calculates the number of agents that have an active token, no matter whether that agent was used in that month or not. We want to fix that metric to make sure that uh, we have better understanding of the usage of our features. And then we have quite a few minor one weight issues listed here. We consider all of them stretch to fill up the time uh, that our engineers have in the milestone. And we have a few future looking stretch goals as well that likely we won't be able to finish in the coming milestone. And this is our delivery plan. Now come the discovery part from any bomb. Hey everyone, this is Emily Bowen, the senior product designer on the environments team, and I'm here to kick off the UX plan for 16.3. So 16.3 with UX, we have quite a few things going on, some spanning multiple milestones and some smaller initiatives we want to get done in this milestone. And the first thing kicking us off is kind of continuing with our outcome of the environments design sprint. So now we have an idea of where we're going with the service oriented operations. We still have to validate that with customers, understand and clear up this concept a bit more. Um, so 16.3 is really gonna be focused around doing some solution validation on this concept, building out some of the uh, technical proposals um, for this and just validating it's what our customers want. So this will be anything from interviews with SREs within GitLab, to interviews with customers outside. Um, so this is a multi-milestone project. We probably won't finish this in 16.3, but we'll get a good chunk of work done. The next one is just a design issue around um, now that we have external jobs, we wanna get the visuals in for that. So what do external jobs look like on the job details page, job list page, pipeline details page? Um, so what call to action should they be there? How should these uh, kind of pages be designed? Um, so we'll want to figure that out um, in 16.3. Um, the third thing will be continued support of the GitLab built-in Kubernetes dashboard design. Um, so this will be in close collaboration with Frontend as they start working through this, seeing what uh, parts of this dashboard need to be put into high fidelity in 16.3 to be ready um, to work on in 16.4. So again, this is another multi-milestone effort um, that design is just helping with as we move through the development of this dashboard. The next one is being um, better at communicating our agent status. Um, so right now you can only find that on the agent status page. Um, we want to bring this up and share more um, potentially in an email or some other channels to let users know when there's an issue with their agent. Another smaller one to look at is add an icon to the Terraform plan widget. So this is within the MR, adding an icon in um, to let users know when something needs attention um, in regards to that. So this is a smaller issue that's been open for quite a while, so investigating is this still a problem? And if it's so, how do we solve it? And then the final one is a very small issue, um, sus impacting issue around the help text with historical releases. Right now, the help text is like a little bit um, hard to understand. So taking a look back how we're communicating historical releases to our users, 
and uh, working with content um, and technical writing to make sure these uh, popovers and just how we're showing this makes sense. And uh, that is the UX kickoff for 16.3. Thanks for uh, listening.